It's Sunday and the children have taken out their new puzzle. Let's watch them solve the puzzle. It looks like some animal. Picture puzzles are interesting. Every little piece has its own place in the puzzle and is an essential building unit, just as cells are to living organisms. The cell is the fundamental unit of life and it has its job cut out so that the organism may live. There, the puzzle is almost done. Oh, it's a panda. Well done. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to list the scientists involved in the discovery of the cell. Describe the working of a compound microscope. Describe the microscopic examination of a plant cell. Describe the microscopic examination of an animal cell. Compare the shape of the cell to its function. Define and identify unicellular and multicellular organisms. Define and identify prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And describe the structure of a bacterial cell. Hi, I'm the great builder. Nobody knew me until my good friend, Mr. Hook, spotted me through a microscope and gave me a name. Living organisms know me better as cell. Does that ring a bell? You'll soon know more about me. The discovery of cells dates back to the 17th century and is associated with the invention of microscopes. Marcello Malpighi, a microscopist, proposed that plants are made of tiny structural units called utricles. In 1665, Robert Hooke, an English scientist, looked at a thin slice of cork through a compound microscope. He observed many tiny hollow room-like structures that resembled a honeycomb and called them cells. Hook actually saw only the outer cell walls because cork cells are not alive. Leeuwenhoek in 1674 with the improved microscope discovered free living cells in pond water for the first time. Robert Brown, in 1831, discovered the nucleus in the cell. Perkinier, in 1839, coined the term protoplasm for the fluid substance of the cell. Two biologists, Schleiden, in 1838, and Schwann, in 1839, proposed the cell theory that all plants and animals are composed of cells. Rudolf Ferko in 1855 further expanded the cell theory by saying omnis cellula e cellula, which means all cells arise from pre-existing cells. All living organisms are made of cells. Cell is derived from the Latin word cellula, which means a little room. Plant and animal cells are too small and visible only under a microscope. So, without the microscope, you would have never known me. That's why I consider the microscope to be one of the greatest inventions of mankind. Let's see how a compound microscope works. The specimen to be observed is placed on a glass slide. The slide is then placed on the stage under an objective piece in the middle of the microscope. The light reflected from the mirror passes onto the object. From the eyepiece, a magnified image of the specimen can be seen. 
the side knobs are turned to get a sharper image. Let's do a microscopic examination of a plant cell. Now, this is going to be fun. Here's an onion. We'll begin by cutting it into halves. Peel off the thin inner layer using forceps. Spread the thin peel on the glass slide. Put a drop of water on it. Add a drop of iodine solution to it. Place a cover slip on it. Tap gently with a needle on the cover slip to remove air bubbles. Place the slide on the stage of the microscope. Small chamber-like structures, called cells, can be observed. Each cell contains a prominent vacuole, nucleus and cytoplasm. That onion cell looked like me, didn't it? But who do we have here? We shall look at an animal cell now. Let's begin with an ice cream spoon. Scrape the inside of your cheek using this spoon. Spread the collected mass in a drop of water on a glass slide. Add a drop of methylene blue. Place a cover slip on it. Now let's observe the cells under the microscope. Look! These cells have darkly stained spherical nuclei at their center. The shape of a cell is related to the specific function it performs. Cells like amoeba change their shapes for motility. Cells like nerve cells have a fixed shape that suits their function of transmitting nerve impulses. The development of the microscope led to the discovery of single and multiple celled organisms. Organisms like amoeba, chlamydomonas, paramecium and bacteria have single cells which constitute the whole organism. These organisms are called unicellular organisms. On the other hand, in organisms like fungi, plants and animals, multiple cells group together to form tissues. These organisms are called multicellular organisms. Do you know how living organisms perform the basic functions of their body? Living organisms perform the basic functions through division of labor between different organs. Yeah, different cells have different jobs allotted to them and we all work as a team for the body to function. All functions within a unicellular organism are carried out by the single cell itself. For example, in amoeba, a single cell is responsible for movement, intake of food, exchange of gases, and excretion. On the other hand, different organs perform different functions in multicellular organisms. For example, the human body has a heart to pump blood, a stomach to digest food, and kidneys to excrete waste. Living organisms are also classified as prokaryotes and eukaryotes based on the organization of cellular structure. Prokaryotes are unicellular organisms that do not have a nuclear membrane and membrane-bound organelles. For example, bacteria and archaea. Eukaryotes are characterized by membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. Eukaryotes can be unicellular, such as trypanosoma, 
euglena, paramecium, or multicellular such as fungi, plants, and animals. Hey, here's a bacteria that is actually prokaryote. Let's take a closer look at it. The cell wall is a non-living layer composed of polysaccharides and proteins. The plasma membrane is a living membrane made of lipids. It is selectively permeable. Hence, it transports ions, nutrients and wastes across the membrane. The cytoplasm is a clear, thick, jelly-like material that forms the seat for all the cell functions. Let's take a closer look at the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains the nucleoid, ribosome and flagella. The nucleoid is a single large circular DNA molecule confined to the central region. It regulates all the functions of the cell. Ribosome transfers the genetic message into proteins. Flagella are appendages responsible for motility. Let's see the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms. Prokaryotic DNA is not bounded by a membrane called nucleoid. Eukaryotic DNA is bounded by a nuclear membrane. Prokaryote has a single circular DNA, while eukaryote has DNA in paired chromosomes. Prokaryotes do not have vacuoles, while eukaryotes do have vacuoles. Welcome to a guided tour of a factory. In this tour, you will explore the factory and find out how it works. This is the protective boundary wall of the factory. As you move in, you find yourself in the main work area. That's the control room. Everything is managed from here. Don't miss the power station. It keeps the factory running. This is where all the work is done on machines. Did you know that just like this factory, there are tiny factories in our bodies as well? Now, sit back and take a trip of the factory running in our bodies. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Identify the parts of a cell Identify different cell organelles and differentiate between plant and animal cells. Hi, I'll be your guide through the rest of the tour. Did you know that the cell is the fundamental and structural unit of life? Take a look at this generalized eukaryotic cell. You will come across the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm and the nucleus in a eukaryotic cell. Look at the cell. Notice the cell wall. The cell wall is the outermost covering which is non-living and rigid. It is seen only in a plant cell. It separates the cell contents from the surroundings and gives shape and protection to the cell. It is composed of cellulose and is permeable. Let's take a closer look at the next membrane called the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. It is a living membrane made of lipoproteins. The plasma membrane is selectively permeable as it allows the movement of some substances in and out of the cell. That's my selectively permeable plasma membrane. I'll show you the different ways in which substances move through it. There is spontaneous movement of gases 
like carbon dioxide and oxygen from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration to form homogeneous solutions through diffusion. The diffusion of solvent molecules through a semi-permeable membrane from a region of low concentration to high concentration is called osmosis. Let's try this out. See what happens when the cell is placed in salt solution. One of three things could happen now. If the medium surrounding the cell has a higher water concentration than the cell, the cell gains water by osmosis and swells. Such a solution is known as hypertonic solution. If the medium has the same water concentration as the cell, there is no net movement of water through the membrane and the cell stays the same size. Such a solution is known as an isotonic solution. If the medium has a lower concentration of water than the cell, the cell loses water by osmosis and then shrinks. Such a solution is known as hypertonic solution. When the cell loses water through osmosis, the cell contents shrink away from the cell wall. This is known as plasmolysis. Let's now look into the cell. This is the control center of the cell called the nucleus. The nucleus has a nuclear membrane which is double layered. The nuclear membrane is perforated to allow substances to enter and leave the nucleus. The nucleus contains chromosomes. Chromosomes contain hereditary information and are composed of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA and proteins. Functional segments of DNA are called genes. The nucleus plays a major role in cell division. It also controls cell development. The fluid living content between the plasma membrane and the nucleus is called cytoplasm. The nucleus, along with the cytoplasm, makes up the living content of the cell called protoplasm. Let's take a closer look at cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a clear, thick, jelly-like material with water, organic compounds and organelles. The liquid part of the cytoplasm, other than the organelles, is called cytosol. Cytoplasm supports and protects the cell organelles that perform different metabolic functions. Did you know that the cell has different organelles? We will explore them now. This is the protein synthesizing site of the cell, called the endoplasmic reticulum. It is an irregular network of double tubular membrane continuous with the nuclear membrane on the inside. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, rough and smooth. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes present on it, while they are absent on smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes proteins while smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes lipids and fats. Some of these proteins and lipids help in building the cell membrane and some function as enzymes and hormones. Endoplasmic reticulum serves as channels for the transport of proteins between various regions of the cytoplasm. Do you know what these small spherical granules are? These are ribosomes 
found scattered in the cytoplasm or attached to the outside of the endoplasmic reticulum. These are naked and have no membrane. Ribosomes synthesize proteins. Here's another organelle. This is the site for storing and transporting proteins across the cytoplasm, called Golgi apparatus. Named after Camellio Golgi, who first described it, Golgi apparatus are stacks of flattened membrane bound sacs or vesicles. These stacks are called cisterns. Vesicles containing soluble proteins produced by the endoplasmic reticulum fuse with dictosomes. These vesicles are transported across the cytoplasm. They fuse with the cell membrane and release the proteins outside the cell. Golgi bodies are also known for the synthesis of glycoproteins. This is the powerhouse of the cell called mitochondria. They have their own DNA and ribosomes to synthesize respiratory enzymes. These enzymes oxidize glucose molecules to produce energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This energy is used for chemical activities and mechanical work. Mitochondria have outer and inner membranes. The inner membrane folds into Christi, creating more area to make ATP. These are lysosomes that keep the life factory clean. Usually absent in plants but present in animals, they contain 40 different types of digestive enzymes. These enzymes destroy injured or old organelles and foreign substances like bacteria and leave the destroyed contents outside the cell. Interestingly, lysosomes are also known as suicide bags. When the cell gets damaged, the lysosome may burst and its enzymes may digest the cell itself. Let's now focus on the storage granules. They are of two types. Starch granules are storage droplets of starch. Lipid granules are storage droplets of fat. Cells have storage units called vacuoles. They store water, energy and waste products and substances like amino acids, sugars and proteins. The fluid contained in them is called cell sap. A vacuole is covered by a living membrane called tonoplast. You've seen this cell before, haven't you? Yes, it's a plant cell. I'll show you an organelle present only in plant cells. The plastids. There are two types of plastids colored plastids called chromoplasts and colorless plastids called leucoplasts. Plastids containing chlorophyll are known as chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are important for photosynthesis. Chloroplasts have membranous layers called grana in a ground substance called stroma. Leucoplasts store starch, oils and protein granules. Here is the animal cell and the plant cell. See if you can spot the differences between them. Plant cells are larger in size compared to animal cells. Plant cells have a cell wall, but animal cells do not. Plant cells have chloroplasts, but animal cells do not. Plant cells usually have a large vacuole, while animal cells have small vacuoles if present. 
The cytoplasm of plant cells is pushed to the periphery by the large vacuole. In animal cells, the cytoplasm is dense and fills the entire cell. Plant cells have fewer or no lysosome compared to animal cells.